All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be speaking with an individual who is set to compete at BKFC 48, which all goes down on August the 11th. We've got Robert Armas getting out there to take on Eric Dodson, knuckling up and towing the line against one another, and great getting to have Eric on the show. How's everything going there, man? Everything's going good, going good. Can't complain. Camp's going well. Um, I got a good team behind me. We've had a lot of people joining on as um, both me and my brother and the sport itself is going good. Um, So everything's going good. Yeah, and it seems like both of you guys, as much as you're having cool individual journeys, like there's a certain synchronicity to it, just both of you guys handing out those dual beatings at, you know, BKFC 28 and just readying to both compete in, you know, intriguing bouts on this next event here. Like, how has this been, you know, both individually as a journey, but also just like your brother kind of being almost in lockstep in certain regards with what you're doing, too? Um, yeah, individually, it's going good. Um, I'm glad I was able to get back into the ring and kind of uh, do something different. I did MMA for a little bit, um, and then uh, just kind of fell out of it for a while. But um, whenever BKFC kind of got started, I, I followed it since the beginning. And then once we uh, uh, had the opportunity to go to one of the tryouts, we, we, we went out there and did that. Um, but the journey itself, or this fight camp itself, has been pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, it, it, it's different. I didn't... Albuquerque is a fight town itself, and I know a lot of fighters are here, but uh, I'm not used to getting recognized on my own. I'm pretty much John Dodson's younger brother for the most part, so um, it, it, it's different. It's, it, it's cool. Um, I'll be at the stores or something, and then people will recognize me. So uh, it, I'm, get, I'm I'm growing in that regard, but it's a little bit different for me. I hadn't, I hadn't expected that. Yeah, it's interesting because I've kind of noticed that too in doing my background on you. Like you've had a handful of amateur MMA bouts, at least per the aggregators that are out there. And just interesting that you returned to BKFC after that like multi-year hiatus and out there in the workforce and stuff like that. But it seems like like you were talking about you caught it early on and it really, I guess, reignited something back in you to return to competition. So definitely love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. I was... I was never real big on, like, jiu-jitsu. Don't get me wrong, I wrestled, um, and and I know a handful of things in jiu-jitsu itself, but um, it just was never my forte. Uh, and I think the crowd plays a lot into that, because especially early on um, with mixed martial arts, the crowd itself wasn't knowledgeable, and so they would boo or say the dumbest kind of things um, while people are, are grappling. And so that just was never my forte, but... All striking, all stand-up for the most part always was. And uh, BKFC seems a little bit more savage, so um, I, I like that part of it, to be honest. But it's a little bit different in, in regards to, to the fact that there's no gloves in general. Because with bigger boxing gloves, um, you're able to shield yourself differently and, and take the impact differently. But you've also got to be conscious of the way you throw punches. So um, there's a handful of differences in it, but I definitely like it a lot more. And it seems like both you and your brother have, like, such an aptitude for it. I mean, you talk about some of the different considerations with bare knuckle and everything. Does a lot of that come from just, like, learning on the job mostly? Is it just using, like, your general, I guess, combat intuition to be able to, like, understand how to, like, approach the sport differently? Like, how does that all work out, I guess? Um, I guess, I don't, I'm not really sure why we're, we're a little bit better at it than than we thought we would be, I guess. Um, I, I know in terms of John and, and me, um, we try to use a speed, especially when we go against each other um, during training practices, just because um, there is that element of I don't want to get bested by my brother, um, but also my brother's and I'm his little brother. Do you know what I mean? So uh, it plays a little bit into it, but in terms of like speed, I think is kind of what helps us a little bit more. It's harder to fill those gaps or make adjustments on the fly um, when punches are coming super duper fast. Um, and so we're able to find holes a little bit better, but it's also harder for the opponent um, to cover up those gaps in that shorter type frame. So it, it all worked out a little bit better for us. And you were kind of just touching on it there. Like it seems like this sport has really. I guess, like, giving you that platform to really, like, step out and, you know, really optimize the skills that you have. Like, a lot more people are noticing you and stuff like that. Like, is that kind of strange almost? Is it, like, a cool 
sort of thing because it seems like you're on a good trajectory right now like there's even talks about like you know a title shot sooner rather than later so like how does it feel just all of this recent you know all of these recent happenings i guess um it's overwhelming or anything like that um i've been i've been around the sport for a long time uh my brother's been in the ufc and he's fought for other promotions um but a lot of our friends around us have been in the ufc but also different promotions um and and some of them just do specifically jujitsu or boxing kickboxing so um i've been around the fight game a long time so it's, it's for me it's not necessarily that um i'm i'm I'm, like, developing my fighting and stuff like that. Um, don't get me wrong. My style is a lot different than John. Um, but I've been around the sport itself for a long time, so it's it's nothing new to me. Um, I'm just basically new to the fans. Yeah, I'm just curious to get some of the thoughts, like, at this juncture, because, I mean, you're approaching a very interesting anniversary here in a lot of regards, just with the first anniversary as a BKFC fighter lining up with August. 27 then just has seemed like a cool journey since from what i could tell it seems like you came to bkfc's attention during a tryout event at donald cerrone's bmf ranch can you talk about i guess just that entire timeline like from the tryouts to kind of where you're at now or sooner rather than later it'll be that one year anniversary as a bare knuckle boxer yeah definitely um so yeah we did the tryouts over at um donald cerrone's um ranch we were going to drive out of town but just by chance somebody sent me a um a flyer that they had uh that they had seen that they were doing it at cowboys ranch which was super duper convenient um we were going to tr- plan a trip uh, a little bit later out but um it was within like two weeks that that we had noticed the flyer here in town so we had done that um and it, and it went well for us uh to be honest um, it had a great showing out there. Don't get me wrong. People want to see Donald Cerrone and see his ranch because he's got a lot of toys out there. But the, in general, um, there was a lot of fighters that went out there to, to at least give give their shot, kind of see see the differences. Um, and and we kind of shined a little bit through that. Uh, my brother's name obviously made its own way, but um, the uh, just being from New Mexico gave us probably a little bit in than it is that it's out in edge with the, the altitudes um, a little bit different than it is here in Albuquerque. It's a little bit higher up too, so um, our, our cardio is pushed through and our, our quickness is pushed through, um, but also confidence of knowing that my brother was alongside me. Um, we He's fought for a bunch of different promotions and in terms of competition, um, both over at Cowboys Ranch and here in town, um, we've had a lot of great fighters over the years come through it, so um, that journey itself is, is has, has been a long journey, but it, eventually it got me here. Um, and then just coming around to that full year, um, it is a little bit different. Uh, there's like, you know, people were curious at first, or um, but now that me and my brother have both done it, especially in Albuquerque, they put up two shows here now, um, and this being our third show um, here in Albuquerque, uh, it, it's growing as a sport. People talk about it. People talk about the fact that they had missed the last one. They're coming to the next one. Um, people are reposting pictures and stuff like that, or just general conversation. Um, the sport itself has grown organically, um, and with us being um, among the first that in, in Albuquerque, at least, to do bare knuckle boxing with the BKFC, um, it, it's it's grown alongside us. So it, it's a fun journey, man. Um, people are more and more people are interested about it. More people are asking about it. Um, some people cringe at the fact that that we do it, but um, it, it's it's fun and it, it's it's a cool adventure and it's cool to be one of the the, the people who kind of helped pioneer it in in Albuquerque at least. Yeah, that must feel amazing to be part of all of that, just as much as the sport is really expanding at a global level. It seems like their, I guess, domestic expansion into that particular state. Yourself and your brother have played a huge role in all of that. So it seems like there's a lot of, I guess, exciting components to that. Like, is that coming from, like, almost like a historical kind of appreciation because it seems like you guys are kind of in that space? I mean, what with your brother trending towards, you know, fighting for that inaugural flyweight title and i mean if you get to where you want to be with you know the featherweight title aspirations i mean we only just cemented the first champion so it seems like there's a lot of like i guess historical opportunity or like a chance to instantiate yourselves even further into the history of this sport i guess yeah absolutely 
Um, as long as we continue to do well and as long as we keep our heads um, real focused on, on our goals, um, we're going to get to where we want to be. And it's, it's kind of cool because at the moment, um, all the records are still being set. Um, and at the moment, there isn't a set of brothers that have done as well as we've done um, in the BKFC as well. Uh, just yet, at least. Um, and then if we both get both, we both get titles. Um, that'll be just another uh, milestone that we'll we'll hit, or a record that will help set. Um, and then hopefully we we'll, we we'll keep fighting, keep keep outlasting the opponents in the way that we've done, so that we can further and further ourselves from it to make it a harder record to beat um, later down the road. Yeah, I just love how you guys have this like playful kind of dynamic where you're like trying to get a quicker knockout than John and vice versa. So yeah, I love to see it. I've got a brother too, so I've got a fun rapport with him too. So I just like to see it in a BKFC context for sure. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just having a little competition with my brother makes it all, all the, the better. Um, it, it, sometimes it, it turns into just me outlasting him in any venue. Or, or vice versa, and just, just beating each other kind of helps um, helps the competition in itself. Because um, I'm competing against John, and, and uh, so I've got a, I've got huge competition regardless of who the opponent is. Um, don't get me wrong; we're not looking past the opponent at any time. But um, having that little bit of competition is a little bit of a push. Um, plus, a fantastic training partner to always go with. Um, someone who's been around, somebody who's proven he's dur- durable, somebody who's um, been in some wars and fought for some titles. And so uh, it's it, it's cool to do it all, all alongside my brother, but that competition in itself helps push us, um, but it also helps us grow because I'm a little bit bigger than he is, a little bit taller, a little bit longer, so um, he's never going to fight somebody who hits as hard as I do for sure. Um, and I'm never going to go up against somebody who's fast as him, so um, going and doing this together is, is, is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like a mutually beneficial arrangement and i also love that you guys also seemingly have like picked the brains of certain people who are already kind of established in the sport as you were getting into it like taylor starling and leonard garcia as well as isaac valley flag from what i understand too so it seems like you guys really checked off all the boxes as you kind of transition into this sport yeah definitely we've reached out to some people um just just just, just to see their experience with it um, obviously the rules are a little bit different, so um, we were able to find out a handful of areas, but also um, put our own twist on a handful of things once we get into those positions. Um, thankfully, we haven't had to, to, to get into a lot of those positions just yet, but um, which is good because we can retool them, um, redefine them every time we step into the octagon. Um, we'll see something different, so we'll be able to come up with something um, a little bit different, a little bit more creative. Um, before getting out of any bad situations we might get put in. But um, with my brother being able to put me in those and then me being able to put him in those, um, we're able to kind of address that before it becomes an issue um, so that hopefully in the ring and then when all the eyes are on us, we're not having to deal with those areas. Yeah, and that seems to come across in your guys' approach for sure. But just curious about this next one here and just some of the insights on this opponent just with this being his fourth BKFC fight and all of his bouts, you know, win or lose ended inside the distance and everything like that. Like, what have you seen from this guy on a, I guess like tape study level where I guess you're seeing some stylistic attributes shining through, like what does he do well in the BKFC ring? I suppose. Um, yeah, so definitely he is, uh, he's, he's a replacement opponent. Um, the original opponent had gotten injured. So, um, we had to find somebody else, uh, and it's, it's a decent enough time frame, and he's coming off a, a recent fight. Um, at least it hasn't been that long since he's fought last. So um, just just watching his, his previous fights and just kind of the little bit of things I could find on him, um, he's, he's definitely going to push the pace. Um, I think his first fight didn't go his way, but it's, it's a learning experience. So um, I think he's learned. Uh, he's absorbed punches, so he's a little bit more familiar with um the rules of the octagon, but also are the, the squared circle, but is also a little bit more adapted at, at dealing with the, the kind the, the kind of adversity that comes alongside with it. Um, like you said, he, he doesn't go the distance very often, so um, he's, he's looking to bring it. So uh, I'm, I'm looking to return fire as soon as I get hit. Uh, 
I'm, I'm looking to, to get into a real big exchange with him, and we'll just kind of see where that goes. Um, it doesn't look like, for the most part, it looks like he's coming in hot and heavy, um, and it looks like uh, he, he's definitely willing to get it done early. Um, put, put a lot of commitment towards that, but um, we'll, we'll have an answer for it once, it once time comes for it. And it's interesting because I get the sense that you don't like, I guess, specifically look at it this way in terms of like overextending yourself to force it. But just even talking about how you think your opponent is going to be approaching this just like with that forward pressure and stuff like that. I mean, you've got the 2-0 and record right now with a pair of first round finishes. It almost sounds like maybe his approach could, you know, sort of play into all of that a little bit. Just getting that, you know, third first round finish notched there. Yeah, definitely. Um uh, for the most part, to be honest, the, the first round of finishes, don't get me wrong, me and my brother had like um, a small bet going with it, but um, in, in terms of the first round of finishes, both on my side and my brother's side, um, the, the bigger aspect of the game honestly should be, um, and it is for us, uh, is, is to land our punches. Um, I know for sure if I, if I land enough punches, um, my opponent's going to go down, and same with my brother. Um, he knows that if he lands enough punches, um, the opponent's going to go down, and if the opponent's looking to push the pace or, or bring it towards us and they run into a handful of punches um, and they're not smart about it, um, they're definitely going to run into some stuff that's going to put them in some, into some trouble. Yeah, for sure, and I ask this obviously not in a way to overlook you know, this opponent here. I mean, squarely focused on this one, but, I mean, you strike me as a guy that is, like, studious or at least aware of some of the surrounding guys in the division and everything. And I kind of mentioned the cementing of the inaugural featherweight champion earlier. Like, what are your thoughts on, I guess, just the general, like, hierarchy of the division? I mean, you asserted yourself into that number five spot as far as, like, the last rankings update. But what are your thoughts on some of the, I guess, compatriots there in the top five and just, you know, Kai Stewart cementing himself as champion recently and all? Uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean... Kai Stewart, and uh, he, he definitely won the belt um, coming up here soon. And then um, other guys in the division. Um, I have a handful of people looking at me, a handful of people um, in my DMs and, and saying that they want to fight. And it, it, uh, and it, it, it's kind of intriguing, to be honest. Um, looking forward towards the fight. Honestly, um, it doesn't matter if, if it's Kai Stewart or somebody comes up through the rankings and beats him. Um, definitely getting to the top is more is more of a goal than it really is. Um, fighting a specific person or anybody um, specifically, but there's a handful of guys that have definitely intrigued me in terms of fighting, uh, and so I just kind of want to see where they go or what they do, um, but I'm definitely interested in, in moving up in the rankings still, um, but also just, just getting as many fights as I can, to be honest. Um, I probably don't have a long time in this sport, but um, on, my, on my way to the top, man, I'm just, I'm just I'm excited to get as many fights as I can. Uh, it's not every day you get to punch somebody in the face, so uh, it's, a, it's an experience that few really, really get to get to uh, experience, and, and to experience it in your hometown over and over again, um, or on a larger scale, with, a, with that many eyes looking at you, it, it, in itself, that experience itself is good. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a couple guys in the division um, above me that I definitely am interested in fighting. Um, it, it's it's going to change throughout the years and throughout the time, um, but I want to see who whoever's above me. I want to put my skills against their skills for sure to showcase um, what it is I can do and what, what I've been working on. Um, like I said, the sport itself, I'm not new to the sport. I'm not new to fighting by any means. Um, I'm, I, I go out there super duper calm. I'm used to this. I've been in a lot, a lot of fights. Um, but I've also had those MMA fights, and we've done training rounds with harder partners. And sometimes when new guys come to the gym, it's basically a fight. So um, I'm not by any means even uh, slightly scared of harder punchers or quicker dudes or um, guys that are specific to boxing or um, any of the people above me, um, not by any means. The, the fight itself, I, I genuinely like the fight, just like kids like balloons, man. And so it, it, it makes it a lot funner that, that I get to experience it in front of a home crowd because who, who doesn't like to show off what they're good at or do what they love doing? So um, the guys the guys in front of me are just the guys in front of me for now, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying, and I'm kind of curious to get some thoughts on this because I feel like I've gotten a certain level of insight into the you know work that you get in like a you know camp sort of sense. But like, how do you I guess curate certain aspects of the camp? Just I I guess what I mean by that is like I know certain 
you know, people who transition over into bare knuckle will add certain almost like unique elements to their training camp. Like some people will like work with like the wooden Muay Thai boards or, you know, grip in the sand, just different things to kind of galvanize the hands and stuff like that. Are you doing that? I know some, I know some fighters kind of scoff at it almost like, where are you in that kind of binary there? Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of one of the fighters that scoff at it. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, don't get me wrong. I, I think having stronger wrists is important, but also we wrap our wrists. Um, but I yeah. think like stuff like punching harder elements to strengthen those, those the, the, the front of your knuckles. Um, it's I, I, I'm halfway about it because the punching power comes from like rotational power, and it comes from the foot, and it comes from shoulder. So. I don't know about strengthening the actual knuckle sometimes. Um, don't get me wrong, my hands swell up um, after the fights, and then, uh, which is expected because you're banging them against something, you know what I mean? But overall, there's nothing you could do in terms of like preventing swelling, not really, for your knuckles. Um, maybe strengthening the wrist, but we wrap them and then we wrap them well. Um, but it's all rotational power for me, so it's, it's just, I don't know, strengthening them just doesn't make sense. Um, in some areas, and sometimes people don't land them, so uh, what's the point of punching wood all day if they don't land, you know? Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from and everything like that, for sure, but I guess one of the last things I wanted to touch on, because I'm generally curious about, like, the origins of different fighter nicknames, and I like yours being, you know, Thuggy Bear and everything, like, where does that come from? Like, who gave you the moniker, and what's the backstory to all of that? interesting so you almost had like a different like i guess perception of how you were fighting versus like how it actually came across when you were watching it back <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um it, was, it wasn't really up until people started taking videos of it that i that i noticed it um and then uh at one point and i think that's kind of where the origin of it came from was uh john jones a while back had posted up on his instagram picture and he uh and he was like look 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 that's john's brother uh, look at him, look at him, look at him. It, it, it looks like a street fight, don't it? Look, he's been here for a while, but he fought like a thug. It looks like a street fight. And then uh, <laughs> people started calling me Thuggy Bear after that. Oh, I love that. That's a great backstory and everything. I definitely appreciate that insights. And I mean, I mean, definitely that sort of approach seems to lend itself well to what you've been doing so far in BKFC. It seems like you've been demonstrably successful and very much appreciate you making some time to talk before this next contest and everything, but just being mindful of your time and schedule, Eric, I'm curious if there's like perhaps a final parting thought you'd like to, to add potentially as we're sort of wrapping things up here, man. Um, not really. I'm just really excited for it to, to come back to Albuquerque. Um, just the BKFC in general to keep putting on shows. Um, it gives Albuquerque something to do. Um, we don't have a, like a big sports team here. Don't get me wrong. Um, we have United, so we have soccer, but um, in terms of, like, NFL teams or, or NBA teams or anything like that, we don't have really Major League Baseball. And so uh, it, it's, it, it's awesome that we're a fight town. We're known for fighting. Um, we'll have the first flyweight champion. We have the first ultimate fighter. Um, and so we've got some good names out of here. So it, it's really cool that, that um, the DKFC is helping us um, develop our fight name in this city itself. But um, I'm super appreciative of it. Um, plus everybody in Albuquerque that comes out to watch, I mean, um, the only reason we're able to do this is because people come and watch and because people like to see it. Um, so as long as people love it, I'm, I'm going to give it my all. Um, and um, it's not something you get to do every day. So um, I hope they're enjoying it as much as I am. I know I love the sport. Um, I hope they like watching it. So um, I can't wait to see my brother win a title. Uh, that'll be fantastic, and it'll be cool to see um, in real life on the same card. So um, I'm, I'm really, really, really appreciative of my opponent um, stepping in um, at a shorter of a notice fight just to kind of help me along um, because I'll still be able to get the fight on that same card with John. So um, I do 
appreciate him for that. Um, don't get me wrong. He's, he's probably looking to take my head off, and so I'll, I'll be there to return the favor. But, man, if, if it wasn't for the opponents, I wouldn't be able to fight. So um, I appreciate the opponents, the fans, the training partners, um, people like you definitely giving us interview, giving us spotlight, but also um, helping us encourage younger kids to kind of do the same thing and keeping the sport itself growing but also alive. Yeah, well said, man. I mean, there's so much going into this August 11th event and very much excited for BKFC 48. And just to reiterate, very much appreciate you making some time to talk before the event. But until everything goes down with the fight, man, you have a good rest of your day. And yeah, thanks for the time. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity.